Welcome to Fearlessly Made You. I am your host, Christy Tobias. Joining me today, our guests are striving to dominate in their personal and professional lives while answering the question, what does it mean to be fearlessly made? On this episode of Fearlessly Made You, guys, I'm super excited. Uh, You may remember in a recent episode, I had the chance to introduce some fun new things that are coming my way, including the recent partnership with uh, a streaming service called Stream Moco. Y'all, I can't even express my excitement and gratitude that we actually have the founder, the CEO of Stream Moco, Thomas Cantley, here with us today, virtually, of course, but with us and uh, excited to, to learn more about his story, but really excited for you guys to meet him. So I'm not gonna tell y'all more. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce y'all to Thomas. Thomas, welcome to Fearlessly Made You. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thanks for having me, such an honor. You know, one of the cool things I love, first of all, you got the coolest vibe in the world. Like, it's just like, I'm here. Like, (laughs) I'm ready for it. And I love, people are explaining to me what the hat on top of your head is. I grew up in the South, but I'm Jamaican, so we don't understand certain things. So the beanie or toboggan, apparently, (laughs) is what it is on top of your head. One of those. Um, It's cute. I love it. I think it's fabulous. Um, But Thomas, we're going to talk a little more about things much more than just your beanie or your toboggan, whatever you want to call it. I want to know a little more about you. And I think our Fearlessly Made You crew absolutely wants to know more about you. Um, so talk to us a little bit about, you know, who Thomas is and, and where Stream Moco came from, like how this came to be. Yeah, so I'm actually originally Canadian. So I, I grew up in Nova Scotia and been all across the country, lived in Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal, everywhere. And then always had this dying need and want to move to New York City. So I started as a photographer and I started my career as a fashion photographer in New York City and built my career there. And then I ended up getting in 2009, yeah, 2009, I ended up getting a stage three testicular cancer. Wow. That's incredible and amazing, like just to think about your story and kind of where you came from just from the beginning. Um, And I think there are a lot of people that are just kind of like stopped, like that kind of stops your journey for a minute, doesn't it? So when you you think about the move to New York and it's funny as you kind of going back to Canada, um, I was having a conversation earlier with some friends about um, the things that I love about Canada, um, like Ryan Reynolds um, and uh, <laughs> and another actor, Shamir Anderson, who, if y'all don't know who he is, Google. Um, also, things I love about Canada. Um, <laughs> but I, I love your the part of your story that kind of just shifts from I moved to New York, I'm kind of starting this journey, and then I have cancer. So let do you let's dive in if you're good with that. I, I kind of want to to get to know that journey because I know there's so much around that that you've also shared with people. Um, so so you're now you're diagnosed with cancer. What does that look like for you now? Yeah. So I mean, I was on the rise. You know, I was 26 years old, and I've been building my career as a fashion photographer in New York, working with Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, uh, amongst many others, the Black Keys, Neil Young, and just. Wow. Um, really building a staple on a career for myself. And then all of a sudden I get stage three cancer and I was only 26 and it was just so hard when you're at that time too. I didn't think like, all you think about is cancer is like people yeah. are affected like older, you know what I mean? Yeah, like older absolutely. people only get cancer, you know? So when I ended up, uh, you know, I, I, I had my orchiectomy, which was a testicle removal, which is the first process of, of that. And they did that in New York. And then I found out that it spread further. It was all in my lymph nodes. Over 100 of my lymph nodes were infected. And they said that we need to do a lymphatic dissection, which is much more costly. They're like, this is going to be like 600000 I'm like, oh, let's go back to Canada. <laughs> right. We're done. We're leaving. We're done. <laughs> yeah. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, did you go through that procedure? Yeah. So when I went back, I was like, you know, my career too is because I was working for, I was working photography, but I was also a producer. So I was working at Vice Media as well at the time. And being a documentarian, I was just Mm. like, the first reaction, everyone thought I was crazy. And the first reaction I gave everyone, I said, yes. And people (laughs) are like, why are you going yes when you got cancer? And I'm like, I have my first subject. This is my first documentary. I get to document the whole experience of going through cancer. 
And back in the day too, this is in 2009. And keep in mind, no social media existed other than YouTube. Facebook right. just came out. The so Facebook I was too. <laughs> <laughs> the Facebook too. So this is like the birth of it. So I was actually one, a, 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 you know, a little bit of a first YouTuber, you know what I mean? Yeah. That generation as an OG. So I just started, um, that was my goal. And that was my therapy and way of dealing with cancer. Cause I didn't know how to fully take that in being 26. So I said, I'm going to be, I'm going to document it all and turn it into a movie. Yeah. And it, there's something really interesting, like that your reaction was yes. Um, and, and it's it's so interesting of like, you know, I think about the conversations that we have on this podcast about being fearlessly made and the fearlessly made you journey. Um, and not that I have had cancer because we're going to dive in even further with that and kind of the impact it's had on your life. Um, but I have post-traumatic stress disorder. And at no point in time did I ever say yes for this disorder or diagnosis. But there was a yes moment when I was like, oh, wait, I can share this story with people that don't understand it or don't get it. And now I'm in a place where I can do that, you know, effectively. But it's cool because for you, I think there there's such power in you kind of owning that journey of like, no, nah, we're going to do this. Like, we're, we're just going to, we're going to lay it out there. So with that, you know, you are now, like you said, you've got your first subject um, and you're, you're really kind of honing in on your, your own vulnerability, right? And, and your own conversation, your own journey. Um, talk with us a little bit more about kind of what that meant, what that felt like. Um, how that was for you. Yeah. And, and the funny thing is too, is, uh, the cool thing is, is actually that'll be on MoCo. Yes. <laughs> a little plug there. Um, Absolutely. Plug so, it. <laughs> no idea about any of this, about cancer, nothing. And it was a real growth opportunity for me to educate myself. And when I was started posting these videos and I'm dating myself, but when I was posting this in 2009, the only way that people could respond to you was when I was putting them on YouTube is they had to comment in the comment section. Yeah. So I had this one guy that commented um, on there to me and just said, Oh my gosh, this video that you posted, your vulnerability, putting yourself out there and sharing your experience. It made me go to the doctor and get checked because men yeah. have this Superman complex. And back then too, in 2009, they weren't as open about themselves. No one was posting their stories about their experiences, especially men. Yeah. You know, so for me, this one kid just said, you saved my life. And it was so hard to find him because he was like somewhere in Norway. Right. You know what I mean? Just to like, and that, that was like a big moment in my life where I just said, I have a bigger purpose. There's a bigger purpose to this documentary and me just being my first subject. Absolutely. Well, and you bring up a really good point too, because like, let's, let's step into that because one of the things that, I love about having this platform to talk is real talk, right? And you just said something that's so important, which is people have got to move past this invincibility complex. Like we've got real stuff going on and it's it's not a preaching platform, but it's just a, a reminder for everyone. Take a minute to pay attention to where you're at and who you are. Like Thomas, I think what you said is, is so easy for someone to like skip over. It's like, oh yeah, like he saved his life. It's like, no, no, no. Like him being honest, like Thomas being honest about his story required someone else to say, you know, something similar has been happening to me. And I just kind of glossed past it because I'm like, I'm fine. Everything's fine. You have to take care of you because no one else will. And I think we have to kind of step into that and remind ourselves of that. But then also, I think it steps into a, a shameless plug for you, which is where MoCo comes into play is really focusing on making a difference and making change in such a positive way. And that requires you to step into truth. And so I think knowing that this journey for you required you to kind of step into that, knowing that people were responding, you've got that one person, but that's one person that's saying it, other people that are probably like behind the scenes saying, oh, wow, this is like really hitting me. So have you found in sharing your journey more, like, are there people that are kind of connecting with you even more about kind of the impact that your journey has had on them? I might get emotional, so I'm just pre I'm just pre warning you. So I'm a crier. I'm Absol a crier, by the way. I love that. Not to say that I love um, people that are crying, but I love the honesty. I think, and I think it, our fearlessly made you crew will love and appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I have no shame. That's one thing I teach my son and stuff like that. I'm like, you should never hold back emotions and feelings because it's just so important for your body and your mind. Yes. Um, but but yeah, like that was the first of many. Like my passion is what like that first story is what drove me yeah. and I had many more I'd say hundreds of stories and impact of pe people 
you know, that was almost like my, my addiction yeah. was just truly meeting people and doing the purpose of my mission of, you know, getting to more of these young men and help, helping them and just seeing how I impact them. People have, I've have about five or six people that have literally tattooed ballsy on, on their body. I love it. That's amazing. Um, Pull that back up be- again so people can see it. Cause I love uh, it. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I yeah. am ballsy. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I tried to, you know, and um, I got funny stories of that tattoo and it was just, but it was like, for me, that was no better feeling in the world than impacting someone's life and just uh, seeing how much I impacted them and just that it was such, uh, you know, that I will never be forgotten. You know what I mean? Yeah. I had people from all over the world that reached out to me still like 10 years later and are just like we you were part of our family ritual yeah and you know and it's just pretty amazing to be able to have that impact because at the end of the day all the money in the world and everything that you do is like it's it's all about the greater purpose so the fact that i've contributed to someone's happiness or helped them in some sort of way is like everything to me i i um, so like you're making me emotional in a really great way because it's just so empowering and powerful to be able to say that. Um, and I think every single person li- lives and leaves a legacy throughout their life. And we can take that for granted when we don't automatically see it. I think you're getting this valuable experience where people are sharing. Um, and like you said earlier, there's the value as well because you are right. Like when it comes to health, um, especially when it comes to men's health, we know statistically men are least likely to talk about it, to go to the doctor, to have those conversations. And so you're opening up a door. Oh, it is making me emotional. Um, you're opening up a door for people to to share and to feel heard um, and, and to feel like their voices are there, which is everything that is why Fearlessly Made You exist is the voice for people who maybe have felt voiceless or felt like they didn't know how to share their voice. Um, And so for me, it brings up the question for you, especially in thinking about this journey that you were on, because I'm sure that was terrifying, right? Um, And probably is still terrifying because you never really forget certain experiences that happen in your life, especially something like cancer. Um, When we think about the conversation around what it means to be fearlessly made, Um, It's the conversation around like not allowing fear to own you. Fear exists, but not allowing it to own you. I would love more than anything to kind of get your perspective on what it means for you to be fearlessly made, especially in light of this journey. One thing that I always say is I, I tell my son this all the time. I said, it's okay to be afraid. It's okay to have fear, but it's about being brave. Yeah. And that's the, that's the biggest thing thing is fear you have to accept fear fear is a is is an emotion it's a feeling and stuff like that's completely normal to have but it's how you how you deal with it and how you transition it and how you turn that into um you know an inspiration or or movement you know what i mean so i'm afraid every day you know what i mean on certain things and what i'm doing but i don't let that fear stand in my way and scare me you know what I mean I just okay how can I maneuver around this or work around it because at the end of the day it's just about being brave and taking that big risk because when you do it it's so you can live in so much regret if you don't get past that hurdle of fear people live their lives you know there's a lot of things when people are starting to create their passions and their ideas especially me creating a streaming platform there's so many people there's fear all these people are going you can't do this Thomas this is tough this is scary everything People reach this point where they get to this peak and fear starts to settle in. Once we start getting out of this safe factor and this yes. part of our brain, you know, the reptilian part of our brain that just really goes, whoa, this is an unborn territory, guys. We step back. And when people reach that point, that is a test from the universe saying, you need to get over that. Yeah. Get over that fear. Take that next step and get over that mountain because there's such a beautiful future ahead for you. But a 90%, I forget what the actual statistic is, but it's between 80 or 90% of people reach that moment of fear and then they drop back. Yeah. And then they live their life in regret of ever getting past that. Yeah. No, that's good. And I think it's, 
I mean, it, it leads into the the second question that I always ask about advice you'd give people trying to live a fearless existence. But before getting to that, um, I want to kind of pause there on what you said, because it, there's the reality that fear is real. And I think we can, some people trick themselves into thinking it's not there, but it's a driver because I, I love your switch and your transition as you're talking to your son about being brave, because now we're turning it completely around. Like it is now a, to- a new concept for us. And that new concept is what's going to help us move to exactly what you said, like move to this next level, but really move through life instead of allowing things to attack us in life. We're moving through with a different purpose. And I think that that is so beautiful. I um, mean, I love that you're, you know, cascading that legacy to your son. As you think about that too, I'm so curious for you. Um, and this is a great way to kind of shift a little bit into um, some of the work that you are doing that I'm excited to be a part of, which goes into kind of the work behind your streaming service, which I want you to do full service to. But before going there, I'm sure there was some fear in kind of putting yourself out there even more um, as you're kind of transitioning in your career too. Um, so I'd love to know from your perspective, you know, how you've used bravery, how you've used that that conversation that you had with your son to help you in your own personal and professional transitions um, and, and kind of how in that story, I think it'll help other people understand how to use that bravery for themselves too. Yeah. And, and you mentioned it earlier. I mean, it's about your legacy at the end of the day. Like I mentioned, like we don't, money doesn't matter at the end of the day. Like when we, when we're on our deathbed and we're going on, um, it's our stories, it's our legacy. What we've created is so important. That's the tangible things in life. And for me, yeah, I mean, personally for my son, everything like, you know, when he comes to me and he says that he's afraid of this or afraid of that. And when I'm taking a new adventure on, there's constant fear because mm-hmm. there's a big aspect of what we've generated in society is fulfilling other people yeah. and getting approval yeah. and, and thinking about failure. You know, um, a good friend of mine, uh, Kyle Cease, who's also one of our creators, so when I, I, I had this conversation with Kyle and Kyle said about Thomas, you have to, what's success to you? What is failure to you? And he says, you have to accept failure. It's a weird thing to comprehend and take on. And yeah. it's going like when, when I was talking about launching my platform, he's like, what is success to you? And I'm going, well, one subscriber, one <laughs> yeah. person watching it is success. It just depends like your idea of what success is, is what we've created in society you know what I mean? And it's all about like just not thinking about what other people think. And, yeah. and that was one big thing that I battle every day is going, bringing myself down and going, wow, look what I have created. Whether I have two subscribers or a hundred thousand subscribers for me is like, it's, it's just truly going, I did it. Yeah. You know, I, I built these steps. I got funding. I made this happen. That is success. So we focus on too much of these other things about how how people are going to react or how they're going to think. And that's, that's where you jump. People jump too far ahead, including myself and to go. And even it's my son, if he's drawing something, he gets frustrated. I'm like, why are you frustrated, honey? Like, this is a beautiful work. Just start it. Keep going. You know what I mean? Don't, don't limit yourself in this fear or judgment or anything. Yeah. And I like that. Like then don't limit yourself, but also it's about you and it's about what you consider success. And I, I want to kind of dive into that even further and, and start to talk about, as you've already kind of touched on and we started the conversation with is, you know, you've built this platform that is just so exciting because it is so much focused on the individual people. Like you guys are seeking the right people with the right content for the right platform. And I think that speaks to itself of what success looks like, not just for you guys in the platform, but also for the people that are part of it, myself included. So talk to us a little bit more about why. Why Streamoco? Why now? And why the, the purpose behind it? Yeah, so, you know, it comes back to my my documentary, and I didn't fit with my documentary uh, over the years. I mean, it's been seven years since I made it, and now it's finally going to be on my platform, is things take time, mm-hmm. but I realigned of, like, truly of who I was then and who I am now. I'm a completely different human, you know what I mean? Yeah. And there's an amazing spiritual leader. Uh, his name's Wayne Dyer. I don't know if you're a fan of his or not. Um but he's, he's educated up to people that we live, we're different humans from when we're 10 years old to 20 to 30 oh, to yes. 40. As we grow, we're a whole different human. 
You know what I mean? Yes. So me, who I was when I was going through my cancer in my 20s, and now I'm almost 40, it's just, it's really my perspective on my documentary completely shifted because what I ended up doing, it was all about the aftermath, yeah. about the journey of like, my documentary wasn't about me being bald or going through cancer in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a typical way that people promoted or put it out there. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. my, my bald head or going through chemo and all the distress and all those things and playing Sarah McLaughlin during it. Yeah. <laughs> um, she always shows but, up during moments. <laughs> He always shows up, whether it's adopting a dog or something, you know, that's sparking these emotions. So my whole documentary was all about like what to aspire to. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I completely shifted that and it didn't fit the mold of what the big networks wanted. Yeah. So you know, I'm like a charismatic, uh, somewhat good looking guy. I had all the makings, but of like being a TV personality, but how I was, I was partying with drag queens and going, you know what I mean? Just yeah. doing, living a life, h- hanging out with, uh, 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 um, flesh from, um, uh, bone thugs and harmony, you yeah. know what I mean? And all these, yes. all these people are doing and meeting all these amazing, incredible people. And so that's kind of one thing that sparked Moco was I was going, we're in this world right now where there's so much negative media and you can't turn on something that is not with murder or killing people or, you know, and the divides that the world has has um, has created with you know racism to everything to you know um, you know uh, you know just um, a- anything you know what I mean yeah. just negative news, and I wanted to create a place that was safe for everyone. Yes, consumers, content creators, making making a place that is fifty more than fifty percent diverse. The content creators that we're creating are are we're making sure that we're really. Uh, giving people fair shots, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and just from LGBTQ to everything, like zero judgment, but bringing a safe place that protects them for them to be them and be creators and own their content. So all our stuff is going, we're not trying to shape you yeah, and create you to be someone you're not. We're going, you're awesome and a creator and amazing in your own way. Let's just take your show. Let's adapt it here. Let's bring it over here. Um, and create a place that, and even for the creator, is going when you're on YouTube and you're on all these other social media platforms, you have to deal with the mental health aspects. Yep. There's commenting, you know, there's so many things that can be triggering these people that they have to deal with. Um, so really creating a place that's safe for consumers, you know, me being having a kid, I love Netflix and I have every other streaming service, but you can't control the ads and all these other things that you're getting hit with. Um, and just creating a safe place and then the one more factor i'll mention is that because i'm so tied to giving back and helping people out i wanted to create an automate auto, automatic paywall you know my paywall goes to supporting creators mm-hmm. and charities so i love that and i think it's it's so important to really differentiate why moco exists why it was created like you said but also why it's so important for people to to be a part of that community. And I, I consider it a community. There's such a, a power in community and there's such a power in you being so honest and vulnerable about the aspirations of MoCo to continue to kind of break down those barriers that exist throughout the world and really live in a space that, I mean, I'll, I'll challenge to say, I think there are different streaming services that try to do this, but there's an intentionality, a purposefulness around the foundation that this is what MoCo is built on. We're not trying to plug this in there. This is literally how MoCo is built, um, which is why I'm so excited, as you all know, with the partnership. So Fearlessly Made You, if you're watching on YouTube, get excited because you'll be able to see the visual of Fearlessly Made You on MoCo. Um, and so I think there's just something exciting about not just being part of making a difference, but being purposefully driven in an organization that is focused on that. Like that is y'all's focus. Um, So it's really amazing to see that. And I think one of the things too that it brings to mind is um, that's a a lot of of work and a lot of ingenuity that you're putting forth to building this platform. Um, And so I'm curious for you, you know, you, you have a child, you're kind of on your own, still probably personal journey, building out your professional journey with this new platform. How are you finding the balance that you need 
to continue to focus on, you know, really making a difference? Like, how do you find that balance? <laughs> uh Balance is a tough word in a startup world. Um, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so, so balance uh, in, in this type of phase, it comes with sacrifice a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm very transparent, uh, you know, with my wife, my family. They're very uh, supportive of me. And um, they know that it's a little it's a little tough time, uh, you know, in the beginning phases. You know what I mean? You try to give your I, I try to make sure that my son and my family and wife don't compromise. So yeah. I do set aside hours. I'm trying to create a lot of balance, even though in the startup phase, there's weeks that can get pretty tough and stuff like that. But I try to make up for it. Because the thing, is, the thing is, at the end of the day, is you want to create something and make something that you're happy doing and you love. Yeah. You know, and that's why I created this. It's like my goal is and mission is to create this amazing opportunity for everyone. And I just want to be diving into the philanthropy and doing that and being able to have that life balance. But even when you are busy and, um, you know, you have to make time for your family because these certain moments when you're, you know, when my son is growing up, I can't get those back. Yeah. And nothing is more important to me um, than, than seeing that, you know, you can't miss out. So that's, I don't want to be that dad or that stereotypical guy who's just creating this because at the end of the day, Family's number one, no yeah. matter what you're doing. Your day can push, or me could be pushed and stuff like that. So it's just, you, you have to have balance in all actuality. So. You know, I have to give you a cheers to that uh, because I think that there is just honesty um, that you're bringing forth when you talk about that. And, and I appreciate you saying the, the reality is there isn't a lot of balance right now. Um, and in, in one of the recent episodes, it was just talking about that vulnerability and I was sharing the reality of, of what my life looks like right now, which is there isn't a ton of balance, but it's the reality of, but I can push it. I can find where it exists and I can take ownership of that. And so part of the conversation as I am cheersing you is also, you know, I, I and you know the question that's coming. Um, part of the balance that I love is I do love wine culture, not just drinking wine, but let's be honest, that part's fun. Um, but also just kind of, you know, engaging in something that's totally unrelated to anything that I'm doing. Um, although a Christie wine would be great. Um, but for you, like, right, I'm getting there. We're going to get there. <laughs> do you have like a, a drink of choice, a beverage of choice when you're just like, you know what? I'm going to breathe like you, something that's a go to for you. Yeah. So, um, so I was going to say, for one, I wish you told me I was able to drink right now because I go grab a beer. Um, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just you can. We'll have is, one afterwards. <laughs> we will. Yeah. It's past 12, right? It's past. I mean, and I can drink. It's, it is whatever time we say it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a cheers to you. And also, when I think about balance, I think about my own balance, <laughs> which comes with I love wine culture. Um, there, there needs to be a Christie wine. I, I know we're, we're going to figure this one out, but also I love to know from each of my, my different fearlessly made you guess, like if there is a wine or a beverage or anything that's a go-to for you, um, I'd love to know what that is. Yes. Yeah, so as I mentioned, I'm Canadian and, and Nova Scotian, um, slash Newfoundland. So we are, I'm a ninth generation fisherman family you know yeah uh, historically so Irish Scottish through and through so like we're we like to drink yes yes <laughs> yes yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> so, so uh but it's funny I have a story so one of my favorite drinks and my friends my wife make fun of me and they call me they call me trashy uh but when I was in Lower East Side in New York, one of my favorite things to do is I would get a PBR and uh, yes. my, I get a PBR and they said my one bar, they give me a paper bag and I'd have my PBR at the bar. And, <laughs> and it was like when I first started, it was like, that's all the beer I can afford. And then yeah. to this day, I always get my PBR and people are always looking at me and they're like, you get ordering a PBR. And I'm like, just has some history to it. It's like yes. where I started and that's, and it's not terrible tasting. So, but yeah, no. I'm a beer guy. There is value in that. I love it. Uh, Thomas, I cannot thank you enough um, for being on Fearlessly Made You. And what I would love for you to do is, you know, we've already talked about, and as a reminder, the partnership that we now have together with Stream Moco. So um, I'm excited because 
by the time everyone gets the chance to hear this, um, we will be fully partnered and you guys will be actually watching this on Streamoco. But for anyone that wants to get connected and has already not been connected because I've connected you, uh, tell people how they can get in touch or find out more about Streamoco. Yeah, so they can check us out on all our socials. Uh... Uh, at StreamMoco, and then they can go to our website, StreamMoco.com is the best way to check us out. Perfect. Thomas, thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing your journey. Thank you for your vulnerability. Um, thank you for being part of the Fearlessly Made You crew. Just so, so grateful for you um, being here with us um, and, and appreciate you so much. Thank, appreciate you. Thanks for having me. You're awesome. Awesome. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us and stay tuned for the next episode of Fearlessly Made You.